Come on up, Soren, and good to see you. All right. Soren, it's you and me, buddy, and your brother. Today, we've got puppets. Very exciting, very fun. So we're going to see what the puppets have to say to us today. Why don't you guys come on down here? Hi, everyone. Who is ready for a super day? Oh, did you have to mention super? What's wrong with super? Yeah, what's wrong with super? As if you don't know. I don't. Not you. What, me? Yes, you. Why him? He knows. I do? You better. Wait, what's going on here? You said super. I bet he put you up to it. I didn't. What? What are you talking about? Super, as in the Super Bowl? Okay, that's not what I was talking about, but what's wrong with the Super Bowl? You don't know? Know what? About him. About me? Yes. No, wait, what? I'm confused. Me too! You brought up Super just to tease me about the Vikings not being in the Super Bowl. No, I didn't. And you probably told her to, to didn't you? What? Why would I do that? To make me feel bad. What? How? Well, you are obviously an Eagles fan. I am? He is? You are. How can you tell? Just, just, just look at him. I still can't tell. Me neither. It's so obvious. Look at him. He's He's green. <gasps> so? So that means he is an Eagles fan and he's trying to make me feel bad. What? Where'd you get that idea? You know it's true. Admit it. It's not. I mean, I'm not. I mean, I don't even know what to say. I do. Just because he is green doesn't mean he is an Eagles fan. Yeah. It doesn't? No. You are just green, that's all. Nothing less, nothing more. Just like I am blue and you are purple, we are what we are, all just different, and that's okay. I mean, last time... We did this, people thought he was Yoda because he was green. Well, he did have the robe and the stick. Hmm, Jedi Master, you say? Nope, not going there again. I was just using that in as, a, as an example. So, you aren't an Eagles fan? Nope. And you are not Yoda. Hmm. Nope. Then what are you? Just your friend, I guess. Perfect. Now what do we do? What was our skit about anyway today? Healing. How Jesus can heal us in many ways. Well, I suppose I could come out with like a broken arm or something. Or I have my head all wrapped up in a bandage. Ooh, ooh, I wanna have an eye patch. That would be so cool. And I could heal you. Using an old Jedi mind. Nope, nope, no. No Star Wars, remember. Besides, we have already had some healing today. We. Have? 
Yes, healing doesn't have to be a broken arm or having your head cracked open or even a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. It doesn't? Oh. No, today we had healing in your heart. You were, ju you were upset and mad today and you were blaming it on him. I was sorry about that. Can, can you forgive me? Of course I can. That is one of many ways Jesus can heal us. There are so many ways we can hurt or be hurt, and Jesus can heal every one of them. The, the end. end. It's a great reminder that Jesus heals us and makes us whole. And when we hurt, we can pray and ask God to be with us, and he will. Let's, uh, let's pray together now, should we? Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and for all the ways that you work in our lives and all the ways that you bring healing. Help us to open our hearts to how you work within us. Amen. Thanks so much for coming on up. You can return to your seats. And while they're doing that, I'll ask the congregation to please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel can be found on page 878 of your pew Bibles, if you would like to read along. The Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 12. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, but apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that you, in you my joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and from Jesus, the source of all love. Amen. Kyle and Nancy Larson were members of the last congregation that I served. They're fantastic people. At the time I was in Maple Grove, Kyle served as a police officer in the Maple Grove Police Department and Nancy as a trauma nurse at North Memorial Medical Center. They've since moved out to Spicer and they live there now. Well, 23 years ago, Nancy volunteered to serve as a part of a medical relief team to the African nation of Rwanda, which had experienced years of civil war and a genocide that killed close to a million people. One day, the medical team, which Nancy was a part of, was driving down the road, moving from one medical camp to another. As they drove, <clears throat> they spotted something on the side of the road. As they approached, they realized that it was a small child lying there. You see, a family of refugees had been trying to get from Rwanda to Burundi to escape the violence. But that border had been closed and the refugees turned away. So this family, along with other refugees, turned and made their way back towards the hills when they were uh, separated from each other by intense mortar shelling. This five-year-old child had spent a month on his own, 
wandering around the area trying to find his family. One day as he was walking down this road by himself, a truck with soldiers in it drove past him. And as it did, one of the soldiers reached out and struck the little boy in the head with a machete. And he collapsed to the ground unconscious. The truck didn't even slow down. When the American medical team found him, they instantly went into action and worked to save this child, transporting him back to their field hospital for emergency surgery and and critical medical care. As a trauma nurse, Nancy spent the most time caring for him, and the two of them bonded. The story of this boy, who they found out later was named Taka, was picked up by an NBC news team and broadcast all around the United States, and soon our whole nation was following this story. Well, Taka was transported to the United States, to New York City, for more surgery and treatment, and Nancy and the rest of the medical team returned home to the Twin Cities. Taka had a beautiful smile and eyes that would just light up. He loved being held and he loved attention. Everyone he encountered fell in love with this child, but they really weren't sure what would happen to Taka in the long term. The assumption was that Taka's family had perished in the shelling and there really was no home in Rwanda for Taka to return to. So Nancy and her husband Kyle began the process of adopting him. And soon, this young boy moved to Minnesota. And Taka Larson grew up in Maple Grove. He went to Totino Grace High School. He played football. He played hockey. When I got to know Taka, he had a great, gregarious, larger-than-life kind of personality and a hilarious sense of humor. Today, Taka is a 28-year-old young man working for a tech company and living in Nashville, Tennessee. And while life has had its moments of challenge for him, like it does for all of us, he is doing well. He is a good man, and I'm still proud of him, and I'm grateful for his parents. When I think of Taka, I smile, and I'm reminded of a simple truth. Love always wins. Against hatred, against anger, against fear, love always wins. You see, love cannot be denied. Yes, there is hate and fear and anger in the world, but these things cannot defeat love. Just like light always defeats shadow, love is always greater than hate. So you can imagine my surprise when about 10 days ago, Lori and I were sitting in the coffee shop on my day off, as is our habit, and I received an email from a reporter asking about my reaction to Westboro Baptist Church's announcement that they would be protesting at Trinity. Excuse me? Who? Our Trinity? The one in Owatonna? Yep. Well, now, I'm not actually going to spend a lot of time talking about these protesters. Frankly, I don't want to give them that kind of time and attention. But I will say this. There are people in the world who do not know love. The ones who attacked Taka on that roadside did not know love. The ones who travel full-time protesting at, at the funerals of fallen soldiers, protesting large events like the Super Bowl, protesting at schools and protesting at churches, yelling hateful, hurtful words. They do not know love. Those who exclude others, those who focus on separation rather than community because of gender or race or economics or or what nation they come from or, or religion or human sexuality, they do not know love. These are people whose own pains and hurts have caused an anger and and even a hatred that boils over inside of them until it begins to consume their spirits. Their anger is like a poison they've ingested that eats away at their hearts, and they lash out in a misdirected attempt to make themselves feel better, and they aim their fury at anyone who does not fit into their narrow box." 
Let's just be honest for a moment. There is darkness in the world. And this week, I've received lots of phone calls and emails of support and concern. And a question I've been asked consistently is, so are you worried? Well, the truth is, I'm not. Annoyed? Yes. Worried? No. I've been annoyed at the hassle, annoyed that these things distract us and take our eyes off our goals and our mission, annoyed that we've had to spend time dealing with this, but I'm not worried about it. Why? Because love is greater than hate and fear and anger. Because love is always greater. Karl Barth wrote a ten-volume theological work titled Ethics that is considered one of the greatest pieces of theological writing ever. When traveling and lecturing throughout the United States at all the important universities and theological schools, it is reported that one young man, a student, asked him, Dr. Barth, you have written multiple volumes on theology, but if you had to boil down all of your theological knowledge into just a sentence or two, what would you say is the essence of your theological understanding? Well, Dr. Barth didn't hesitate. He replied, it's really quite simple. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Yes, it is simple. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves you. It is not a conditional statement. It doesn't say Jesus loves you unless. It is not dependent on economic status or skin color or sexuality or anything. It is just a simple, beautiful statement, a truth. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Both of our scripture texts this morning remind us that love is a gift and that this gift has a source. First John tells us that for love is of God and everyone that knows love knows God. And John's gospel reminds us that there is a vine that is the source of all things good and that we are branches attached to that vine. You separate us from the vine and we become well, merely compost. But connected to the source of love, we live, thrive, bear fruit, and become disciples. We bear fruit. Remember that fruit is a visible sign. You walk past a plant and you can see fruit. It's a visible sign of the health of the plant. So my question for us today is what can people see within us that shows Jesus' love? What is the evidence? Because those people out there who stand on street corners and yell hateful things, well, at least there's no doubt what they believe. Just read their signs. No, wait. On second thought, don't read their signs. Really, trust me. But what do we believe? How do we show it? What are our signs? In baptism, we are all given a sign, the sign of a cross marked on our foreheads with the words of promise. You've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And with that, we know who we are. But the way we love, the way we care, the way we welcome, that is our visible sign of what God does within us. Today, we'd like to give you another sign a small one, admittedly a temporary one, but still a visible sign. I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward at this point, and they are going to distribute these small buttons. The button has the word love on it, and in the center of the O of the word love is a small cross surrounded by the Luther rose. And next to the word love is the mathematical sign greater than as in love is greater, because love is greater. Love is greater than hate. Love is greater than anger. Love is greater than fear. Love is greater than prejudice. Love is greater than soldiers and machetes. Love is greater than racism. Love is greater than greed. Love is greater than homophobia. Love is greater than anything that separates us from each other. Love is always greater, and love comes from
from God. Wear this sign. Wear it today as you walk out of church so that they, so that all that we encounter can see it. It is a public witness that love is greater than any anger or hate that is spewed from any street corner. Wear this sign this week. Let it be a reminder to all we see that there is something greater than the darkness that can sometimes feel like it's closing in. And when you're done wearing it, don't let it drop into that junk drawer that we all have, which is where, at least in our house, little objects like this go to die. No, set it somewhere where it will be visible and where occasionally you'll notice it. Put it on a bulletin board or put it on a shelf. Let it remind you always that love comes from God and that this love is greater than hatred, anger, divisiveness, and even death. Let it remind us that while love is always greater, God's love is the greatest of all, that Jesus went to the cross because of that love, and he did it for you. An author... Pastor Michael Iaconelli once wrote that the grace of God is dangerous. It's lavish, excessive, outrageous, and scandalous. God's grace is ridiculously inclusive. Apparently, God doesn't care who he loves. He's not very careful about the people he calls his friends or the people he calls his church. My friends, let's love with that kind of love. Let's love boldly, on purpose, out loud. It is our public witness. It is the public sharing of our love that will remind everyone we encounter that God is the source of love and that love is always greater. Thanks be to God. Amen. For our Thanksgiving moment today, I'd like to do something a little bit different. <clears throat> Normally, we talk about programs or ministries of the church and, and how we support that, and we give thanks to people and God for being a part of that. Today, I'm going to step out of that normal box and talk for a minute about an individual, because today is the official day that John Petersburg retires as the congregation's administrator, a position he's held and served in faithfully for over 20 years, which is just a remarkable amount of time for someone in that position. And when you think back to Trinity Lutheran Church 20 years ago, and you compare it today, and you think of how the church and the community have changed, and John has been at the heart of that change and creating systems and methods and and ways for our church to function and operate on a day-to-day basis, that God's mission can continue to be fulfilled uh, here in this place and in our community. And so we are so grateful to John for his 20th, 20 years of service, and we wish him well in his Um, on his uh, retirement, and he's not in the room right now, but he's going to be in the building this morning and here for our annual meeting, and I encourage you to take a moment and stop, pause, and thank him for his wonderful service to our congregation. We are so grateful to him, and most importantly, grateful to God for working through him um, that Christ's mission can be served here in this place. Thanks be to God.